We will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. And we will make America great again. Well, Friday, friends. Uh, great to join you. Pro-Life leader Frank Pavone here. And we have a special guest tonight that I think you're going to enjoy. She is the daughter of Dinesh D'Souza, who uh, recently came out with the film Police State. We're going to talk a little bit uh, with her and about the film. First, let's do as we always do and uh, look at the Word of God. And let's look at it in regard to what it says about civil authority, which has become corrupted and weaponized. But we take our cue from Paul's letter to the Romans here about civil authority, and then we'll comment on what's, what's happening to it in America. Romans 13 says this. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, also, you pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Let us pray. Father, you have established earthly authority, and you expect those who exercise it to honor you and to respect those whom they govern. Lord God, that is what we pray tonight for America, that those who wield the levers of power will never abuse it, will not weaponize it. And yet we know, Lord, that many are doing exactly that, and we ask you tonight, in the power of your Spirit and by the thrust of your grace, put a stop to the weaponization of government in our land. Put a stop, Lord God, to the actions of those who would take the very mechanisms meant to ensure our safety, well-being, and freedom and turning them into weapons of tyranny. Lord God, this disturbs us greatly. This motivates us highly to be involved in our elections and to vote out of office any who would abuse the office that they have assumed. And give us insight, and give us strength, give us perseverance, and Lord, give us the victory. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this is a very pertinent passage to what we're going to discuss with Danielle D'Souza Gill in just a moment. Because, look, what it says is that authority in the state is, is, in fact, instituted by God. Notice that it calls those who are in civil office ministers of God. It's not just the clergy who are ministers of God. It's, 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 it's public officials. Do you think of it in that way? And this doesn't mean that just because they're in those positions of authority, anything they do is therefore approved of by God. No, it means the opposite, that if you're in that position of authority, you're accountable to God. You've got to do what, what conforms to his law and his will. It's not your power. What the thrust of the reading is here is that you're sharing in God's power by God's generous choice to be able to share some of his power with human beings. I mean, look, he shares his power with parents. Parents are not lord of their children, but they are stewards. They're entrusted with the lives of their children. Their children are equal in dignity to they are. That's why child abuse is wrong. That's why abortion is wrong. But they, 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 they do share in God's own authority. Scripture says, children, obey your parents. So they're, 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 
there's a hierarchy here. God has all the authority. He entrusts it to human beings to exercise in a way that does what? Obeys him and serves them. You obey the God who is over you. You respect the rights and serve the needs of those who are under your governance. You, just because you have power of governance, are not God. You're subject to God. So the whole thrust of the reading is, hey, those of you that are in, in authority, you are God's servant for good, not for evil. To advance His purposes, not your agenda. To serve the people you govern, not to lord it over them. There are many other passages, of course, that reaffirm this. Jesus says it is those among the Gentiles who make their authority felt. They lord it over them. It cannot be that way with you. What did Jesus say? The greatest among you must be the servant of the rest. And what did he say when they asked him if it was right to pay taxes to Caesar? He said, well, who's, who's, whose name and inscription are on the coin? Oh, Caesar's, they said. Well, then give to Caesar what is Caesar, but give to God what is God. If the coin belongs to Caesar because it bears the image of Caesar, then what belongs to God? That which bears the image of God, including human life, including the life of Caesar himself. Caesar must obey God. Again, there's the hierarchy. Those who are in public authority are accountable to God. They're also accountable to the people, especially in a representative form of, of government like we have, a constitutional republic. Accountable to the people because they're there to, to, to protect their rights, not to, not to veto them. So a police state. A state like we have now, and I'm not saying it's on the horizon, it's here already, where government is weaponized to target people with whom those in power disagree, and then they try to limit their freedom, they try to punish them, they try to silence them, they try to put them in jail, because they, in power, want to advance their political agenda. They've got it all screwed up, brothers and sisters, because our declaration says to, in, to secure the rights of the people that were given to them by God, governments are instituted. In between, in between, deriving their powers from God in its institution, like the word tells us, but then any authority they have over the governed derives from the consent of the governed. It doesn't get any better than that. That's why our constitution has perdured it through all these centuries. No other constitution has lasted as long as ours. No other. Because it got it right. It's a perfect formula. Our rights are given by God. It's by the consent of the governed that they are governed. And that government exists to secure those rights. This is, it doesn't get any better than that. They're all, everyone is equal. Everyone is equal. That's the basis for freedom. If everyone is equal, nobody can enslave another person. You can't abort another person either. You become God over that person. No, all are created equal. Our great new speaker, Mike Johnson, pointed this out in his acceptance speech. He said, uh, you know, our creed, we have an American creed, and it says we were created equal. Not many emphasize, not born equal, created equal. The unborn are equal too. So we have the opposite of this going on right now. In a government that takes its political opponents, like Biden is doing to Trump, and like the Biden DOJ and FBI are doing to a lot of us, and targeting us to try to silence us, to try to stop us from thwarting their godless agenda. That's what it comes down to. Danielle D'Souza Gill knows something about this. Um, she is the daughter of Dinesh D'Souza, who created this new film, Police State. She's a wife and mother. I just met her her daughter, newborn daughter, the other uh, the other night. I was with her at Mar-a-Lago for the premiere of this movie, Police State. She was one of the co-producers of it. She's a former advisory board member for Women for Trump. She's also an author of a book called The Choice, The Abortion Divide in America. And she is a podcaster as well. Uh, we are going to welcome uh, Danielle to the program. Let's listen to this discussion about this film, Police State. Well, we want to welcome Danielle once again to our program, and uh, thank you so much, Danielle, for joining us again today. Hi, Father Frank. Thanks so much for having me. 
Uh, well, we appreciate uh, having you, and you know, you, you, I've been on your show, uh, you've been on mine, and and we remember fondly when you uh, emceed for our national prayer service on the day of the March for Life a couple of years back. You did a great job, and uh, you know, at that service each year, we we honor uh, certain people in the pro life movement. And uh, as I All may have the told people you, who were there, who came out for the March for Life, who wanted to pray, worship, and just be part of such a special event that you put together with uh, Priests for Life. So that was just really a highlight of my year. Well, I'm glad. And uh, the, one of the people we're going to honor in 2024 is Mark Houck, uh, who, as you know, yeah. is uh, one of the people featured in this new film, Police State. And we want to talk about that today because your dad put that together with the help of, uh, of you and many other key people, Dan Bongino and so forth. Uh, and we want to talk about that film today because I think it's a key message for America and it's a key tool to prepare voters for this next election. So, Danielle, tell us about this Police State film. Well, it's really a scary film in many ways because it really dives deep into the heart of what's behind kind of the, 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 the they, well, they call it police state, but it's kind of the deep state and everything um, that's really behind these three letter organizations like the FBI, the DOJ, um, all of these organizations that are government arms, but really operate in a way that targets American citizens. And Many of these um, organizations were set up to protect American citizens, but because they've been given so much power, um, like the movie highlights some of the history behind it with the Patriot Act, kind of setting up this precedence to allow this kind of surveillance and targeting of American citizens. Now these government agencies, which were supposed to protect us, are actually targeting many people. You mentioned Mark Houck, a pro-life activist, um, targeting normal Americans just like him. Um, when it's just atrocious what's happened. And um, he, of course, was vindicated in the end. He, he ended up um, being able to kind of return to his life, which is great, but it never should have happened to him in the first place. And many other people, unfortunately, who were targeted didn't end up as fortunate as, as he did, where um, they're, you know, sitting in jail or they lost, um, lost their homes, lost much more. And so the movie really dives into many different anecdotes and people who experienced being targeted by the police state, as well as a little bit about why this is happening and how it started and what we can do moving forward. Well, of course, Exhibit A is President Trump himself, right? I mean, what we see a blatant interference with our elections right now as prosecutors and judges uh, all Democrat, all Democrat controlled and Democrat inspired, try to decide for us who our nominee will be and who our next president will be. And they're trying to decide it by influencing voters in a negative way through all these indictments and charges, which are based on nothing. I mean, when you really go down and analyze them, there's no basis to them whatsoever. So um, the president uh, really is, uh, president number 45, really is exhibit A in all of this, isn't he? He definitely is. And that's why in the film, we really try to go into um, how this started before President Trump, but I think really was brought to light during President Trump's um, 2016 election and also during his presidency. Because I think before that, people thought maybe there was some sketchy stuff going on with the FBI, for example, but didn't really realize just how bad it was. And then once Trump was elected, um, we kind of saw that the government, the swamp, many of these people who um, have been in D.C. for years wanted to stop him and basically undermine his entire presidency and make it so that um, all the things he wanted to accomplish would be more difficult. And then, of course, now that Biden's in office, a lot of these organizations are kind of free to run wild because they don't have any other check on them. Danielle, I want to ask you a little bit about the timing of this, because this is really an unfolding story. Uh, we are seeing whistleblowers come forward from the FBI. We're seeing Congress do investigations. Uh, we ourselves here at Priests for Life are, are doing some FOIA requests for more information with regard to the targeting of Catholic and pro-life institutions uh, by, the, uh, by the FBI and the DOJ. We're seeing information coming out about that. So it's a developing story. Um, did your dad get the, uh, when did your dad get the idea to start putting this together? And does he feel vindicated by the things that have happened since then? 
Yeah, I think that he, um, when he did 2000 Mules, he really found out, you know, the election was stolen. He looked into a lot of how that occurred and then kind of started finding out more about some of these hit jobs on people and realized from especially what happened with many of the January 6ers, many pro-lifers and so on, that um, actually things are a lot worse than we think. And it's not just our election system that that um, needs to be fixed, but also some of these deeper, larger organizations that have a lot of power. And so um, I think he really knew that that was the next film he wanted to do. And then he ended up calling Jan Bongino because he was a Secret Service agent and knows a lot about how these things work. So I think he wanted to kind of collaborate with him on this film and uh, he was, interested and wanted to do it. So I think that they made a really good team and were able to kind of dive into this together. I think they both thought of it as a real passion project because um, many of these people's stories aren't told and many people just get beaten down. And at the end of the day, feel so discouraged and feel like, what is the point of this? And so I think they felt like to really shed a light on a lot of these individuals who've been through so much pain um, would just be a really meaningful experience because a lot of these people like Joseph Bolanos, who's highlighted in the film, he would just went to um, the to, to hear President Trump at January 6th, didn't go in the Capitol or anything. Um, he had his whole life ruined because of this. And so I think for a lot of those people to end up going to Mar-a-Lago themselves, be part of this film and all of that, and to have so many people hear their story was really cool for them. You know, let's try to get uh, in a in a real in a nutshell the definition of a police state. I think I, you know one of the most impactful statements and explanations uh, Dan Bongino gives when he says, "Look, you know, in 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 America, we're supposed to go after a crime in search of the person who committed it, person or persons." That's the American system. Something happened. We know that it happened. We know that it was wrong. And then we investigate it. In a police state, you go after a person in search of a crime. So you target a person because you, you disagree with them politically, ideologically. You say, okay, we have to bring this person down. We have to neutralize this person's influence. Uh, let's, 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 let's find some way we can pin a crime on that person. I think that's one of the best yeah. definitions of it. But how would you describe, in a nutshell, what we mean when we say a police state. Yeah, I think that some of the examples they use is um, kind of what we would normally think of is North Korea or places that have just a um, very obvious police state where it's clear that there's a dictator and so on. But here, I think it's, it's behind the scenes. You know, these organizations mask themselves as being neutral. And of course, many people on the left uh, would say, oh, you know, Trump's the real dictator. But in reality, of course, Trump is the one who is being targeted by the police state, as you mentioned. And we know this because before all of this, he was loved, he was praised by the left, he was a celebrity, Oprah, he'd go on all these shows. And then once it became clear he was more conservative or MAGA, created this new movement, um, he became a target of the police state. And so it's clearly only for political reasons. And similarly for conservatives, for Catholics, pro-life people, they're being targeted purely because of their views. And it's not because, again, Mark Houck is a violent person or um, most of the people at January 6th were violent people. It's not that crimes were committed and then they were tried. It's because they are targeted because of their beliefs. And so then they have to figure out, hmm, what crime can we get you for? Similarly, there were, you know, it's like the talk of the IRS coming after certain people and, um, police state was targeted for that because they're, we were trying to pay um, Salem an amount of money and then the funds were intercepted by government agency. And so these things happen, but it's not just because you did something wrong. It's because really they say, we're going to keep an eye on you. We're going to find the person and then we will find the crime that you will be guilty of. You know, it's uh, it's tricky. I, I see an upside and a downside with the way this is playing out in America. I'd like you to comment on this. It's more tricky in America because the police state is disguised. 
Uh, I think one of the terms that's used in the film is it's a it's a soft police state at the moment. I think that's where you how your dad described it. And because because we do we have all the trappings of a constitutional republic, but it's functioning as a police state because, as you said, these behind the scenes agencies and the way they've been corrupted. So the downside is it's more in disguise. You can better fight an enemy that you see and and that you can identify as the enemy. Now the upside of it is. That although I believe, and, 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 and you can tell me your view, I believe not that the police state is coming, but that it's here already. Uh, we are fully in the midst of it. But because we are America, uh, and because this hasn't completely taken over the levers of our government, we can still turn it around. And the way we turn it around is the vote. And the vote, of course, has to be preceded by education of the voters, of which this film is a key tool. Um, am I am I right in that assessment, or how do you see it? Absolutely. I mean, I think we think we're kind of at the precipice in the sense that, yes, can we stop it? Can we turn back? Of course, I think we can definitely save America, and we have not given up hope in any way. But I also think it has gotten to a point where it's pretty bad and has really... Um, as I said, kind of affected just really normal people, people that you would never think would have been targets of a police state. Um, so yes, I think we are definitely there. I mean, this is all happening. And if it wasn't happening, we wouldn't be able to document it or release footage of, of this happening. So we are there, it's happening. But I think we can definitely turn things around and make it better. But I think that also starts by people knowing that this is happening. And hopefully these organizations feel a little bit more like, hey, other people are watching this and know about this. And so maybe we can't do this anymore. And then um, long term, I think hopefully really draining the swamp, at draining these organizations. I, I think that the, the, the last term when Trump was president, he wasn't able to fully do that. But if we have him back again, then hopefully that can be one of his his main goals. Well, he has promised to obliterate the deep state, and he, he's been telling voters he knows now way more than he did in 2017 when he first walked into that Oval Office. So we've got a big, uh, you know, we've got a big edge on the whole situation. So final, final uh, things here. Uh, first of all, are there any anecdotes that you have that show the impact this film is starting to have? It aired in theaters on two days at the end of October. Uh, and then it was, there was an online premiere at the end of that week. And now um, it is available. Uh, I want you to walk yeah. our viewers through how they can access it. But have you seen any any stories yet about the uh, how this is waking people up? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, you can go to policestatefilm.net. That has all the ways you can watch it. But just to keep it simple, you can either buy a DVD or you can stream it at home. So the theater oh. release was great. Um, they had more theaters sold out than 2,000 mules. But I think with streaming and DVD, sometimes um, the streaming people find a little bit tricky. But basically, you go to the website, policestatefilm.net, and then you can either stream it on Rumble or Salem Now. And um, you just hit a button. There's a whole thing of instructions if you need to figure out how to connect it to a Fire or Apple or some kind of TV if you're trying to connect it. But basically, it's like you would stream any other any other film. Um, and then, of course, there's just the traditional DVD. But um, all of that's on policestatefilm.net, the website. And um, as far as anecdotes, yes, there were some really, really cool um, cool things that happened. I mean, I would say some of them were a bit sad in the sense that I think because I was part of the filming and hearing a lot of the stories, it was quite sad to hear about um, the stories of the FBI coming, battering people's doors, coming into their homes in the middle of the night and so on. So that was quite disturbing. But I think seeing the reactions of many people, at least from theaters, a lot of people stood at the end, they sang the national anthem together, uh -huh. um, really had uh, such a like a cohesive experience because in many ways in America, I feel like we kind of are so atomized and separated and divided and many people don't have any sense of kind of community with anybody else. But I think whenever people would come out of the film, they would feel like, wow, you know, all these other people um, were just as impacted as I was and maybe now realize what's happening with this police state. And so I think it, it definitely is an eye opener. And a lot of people feel like after they watched it, they they were changed. Like before that, I think 
surveys would show that um, people thought, you know, maybe there's some kind of deep state stuff going on, didn't really know. But then after the film felt like, wow, I were definitely living in a police state. And so I think the film really does its job in exposing the truth there. So it's a great movie to give to friends, family, people who who may be interested in this, but don't know a lot about it, maybe want to be more, um, more educated on this matter. But I also think, um, yeah, just kind of more of the patriotism behind it, because many of the mm-hmm. people who, who, um, you know, get this film for a friend or family member and so on, they do it because they love this country and because they um, they were so moved by the film. So yeah, it's really, really well done. It's shot really well. And just the whole thing is definitely worth watching. Sometimes I see a documentary and I'm like, wow, I'm really interested in this topic. But the documentary itself, I'm like, I have to kind of force myself to watch it. But um, but this one is really, it's, it's really a, a well done film, I think. Well, it is. I really appreciated watching it. Uh, You know, I was going, I had signed up to go to the first um, uh, airing, the first night in the theaters, October 23rd. And then I got your invitation uh, to come to (laughs) Mar-a-Lago. And I said, you know what? I want to have the experience of watching this in the same room as those who created it, in the same room as some of the best patriots from across our country. And that room that night was filled with exactly those kinds of people. I was so uh, always so privileged to come to these kind of events. And I said, that's going to be where I'm going to watch it for the first time. And it won't be the last time because I think this is a Aww. film people need to watch again and again uh, to, because it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an education. It's, it's like a cor- a mini course. We've got to understand these things. We've got to know what's going on here. And I think it's one of the greatest tools to prepare America for the elections of 2024, which it's no exaggeration to say are the most important in our history. So thanks, Danielle, for the role that you've played in this. Uh, and of course, we always give great, uh, great uh, honor and, and thanks to your dad and the, and the whole team uh, that has put this together. You know that all of us at Priest for Life are standing with and working with all of you side by side until the victory is won. So we, you have that commitment from us, and uh, thank you for everything that uh, you've done and continue to do. We look forward to talking with you many times in the future. Oh, well, thank you so much, Father Frank, and keep up the great work you're doing. And I really hope that this this, this next year, 2024, is a, a great one and a, a game changer for the elections, as you mentioned, and for life in America and the ending of the police state. So thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And amen to all of that. God bless you. You too. I hope that discussion was a blessing to you, brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, there are two big, great tools for preparing for this election. One, as I mentioned, is this film. The other is the book we've been studying on this program and we will continue studying next week. And that is Mark Levin's book, The Democrat Party Hates America. Let's get our fellow citizens mobilized, inspired, instructed for this election 2024, the most important of our lifetime now, less than a year away. Let's pray to the Lord. Father, uh, bless our country. And may the insights of this film, Lord God, uh, just uh, raise raise the, the alarms within the consciences of your people, not discourage them, but rather inspire them, lift them up to be a clarion call, a battle cry, to get involved and to get informed and to mobilize their fellow citizens for action. Bless us and bless and save America. And we pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, have a great weekend. Thanks for for being with me on Praying for America, spread the word to others. We have a great audience, but we always want to increase it. And more people need to hear the message. And again, we don't just comment on the news. We're, we're praying over the news and we're looking at it explicitly in the light of God's word. That's the way we save America. Thanks so much. Connect with me on social media too, at FR Frank Pavone, at FR Frank Pavone. And we will talk to you soon. Priests for Life. Saving lives for over 30 years.